Greetings, adventurers, and welcome to the Adventure Incorporated Podcast. I am your Dungeon Master. You may be familiar with me. My name is Anthony Reed. This is episode 77. It is part of the Oracle story arc, and we have moved on to Belroth's stories, and I, I think you're going to enjoy them. Uh, there's a lot to get into here. Uh, I've really enjoyed doing these stories. They're, uh, you know, sometimes they're born out of necessity, but I really, really love what we've managed to pull out of them. And I'm hoping you're digging them too. Patrons, over at patreon.com slash adventuring, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for supporting the show financially. If you're not a patron and you're not supporting the show like they are, well, you're just not doing it and then we wish you would uh so head over to patreon.com slash adventure inc become a patron today and do it i guess is what i'm trying to say just do it i don't i don't let's get started Nobles and farmers, knights and scoundrels, gather round, gather round to hear a tale of excitement and mystery. Brave adventurers facing grave dangers. Billroth, the ranger. She's a grimalkin, that's, uh, but that's understood. No pets allowed, even though she's not a pet. I will wait outside. Everyone, if anyone needs anything, I am outside. Scarpin, the cleric. Should I just try and snipe them from over here? Yeah, okay. I did say they were as good as dead. I would hate for, for my, you know, to break my word on our first contract as Adventure Incorporated. Ellery, the bard. We would want you to leave this warehouse. He points behind him. Mm-hmm. Church! Oh, sorry. We want you to leave this church. Deerin, the wizard. He say you no worship Shattered Fang. Yeah, man, he's, like, super wrong. We love Broken Tooth. Uh, Shattered Fang, man. Prepare yourselves, for these are the tales of Adventure Incorporated. Your eyes flutter open. You can still sort of smell the smoke uh, from the room, but that smell is fading. As you look around your surroundings, you are Belroth Brilliance a disciple of Diane. Your dwelling is small, humble. A couple of uh, small pieces of furniture, a chair by a hearth, uh, a bed that you are laying in, um, a small set of cookware, and along the wall, a number of devices you might use to um, bring yourself closer to the teachings when needed. Mm -hmm. to seek that path of perfection, uh, of understanding of uh, your own self. So obviously the point in time that we are watching this diversion happen comes when Belroth uh, comes of age and makes a choice between his future and uh, the path we know him from. And so uh, what does... Belroth's, uh, you know, you have, you're flooded with these memories. Suddenly they, they overwhelm you, overtake you. Um, where is Belroth at in this, in like in his state of, of being, um, as he has come into this, uh, prominence within this group, you know, this is a group about understanding yourself. Where Mm -hmm. is Belroth in that journey? In that journey, he's definitely, I feel like he's moderately successful, um, more successful than he expected to be um, in a way that feels easier than it should. Um, Belroth, who's the Belroth, who's, I assume, experiencing this vision is upset because the rest of his life has been very hard up to this point. <laughs> And it feels like he's suddenly like, oh, this was a better choice. Or that's like the first thing that kind of comes to his brain is that he immediately knows that he's like, he's up there. And he's he's even more charismatic at this than teaching, which he thinks he is, but other people disagree. Um, Because he is very good at this kind of learning and this kind of speaking and teaching. Uh, There is a knock at your door. 
<clears throat> Coming. He opens it. Um, behind the uh, at the door, there is a a young human. Uh, she is maybe sixteen or seventeen. She's on mm-hmm. the young side. Uh, she lifts the sleeve of her robe, and tattooed on her arm is a candle. Uh, and the candle has a, a large flame at the head of the candle. And she says, uh, Disciple Flame, I have come to seek you. You are the one they call Disciple Beacon. Yes? Uh, Belroth raises his... Um, he's currently in a very meager uh, sort of robe, and he raises his sleeve as well to display a... Um, a lighthouse on the shore with a uh, a brilliant eye on top, just emitting rays of light. Um, it is I, Disciple Beacon. As we speak, as we cannot speak in public. I have come to seek your aid with a, a member of my family who I am hoping will understand themselves better. I understand. You do not need to explain. Can you take me to this person? Indeed. Uh, and she like pulls her hood down a little bit and uh, leads off through uh, toward a carriage that she has set up. Belroth also uh, pulls his hood over as well. Um, and it, his, his robe is very meager, but it is all black um with uh small uh bits of purple um but not like almost purple thread that you would miss if you weren't looking for it sort of stitched in uh she says we will not have to travel far we have brought him a great distance but we thought it best if we uh met somewhere a little more open of course i i i know that our ways are confusing to many and our ways are difficult for the common um how do you say the the common sensibility sensibilities to understand why this is so good and why our our teachings are so healing um patience as you know is a thing that we must exhibit and we will exhibit that patience with this person she uh, takes her space up at the top of the cart. It's just a small cart. Like, it's got an open back um, that you might use to just, like, bring hay around or whatever. But there's a bench up front. <laughs> Excellent. She, meager. Yeah. He's Belroth is into it. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's all about the meager right now. Uh, and uh, she motions for you to join her on the bench. He does. And she takes the cart out of the uh, the small space here around this. I think, like, probably your little hut is out in the woods a ways. Um, you know, you're sort of isolated off from, from places. But uh, looking around, you can tell that this is Grey Woods uh, and that you're actually pretty close to prosperity. You're mm. not, uh, you know, it's, it's a short distance away. Um, and you're just, f- there's a piece of you that's familiar enough with these woods uh, and the memories flooding in that you understand, you know, that's where you are. Mm-hmm. Um, is this like a dream, like, uh, travel in that, like we are traveling and it, it, I'm not perceiving us traveling. I'm just knowing that we're traveling. Do you know what I mean? No, no, no. This is, uh, everything feels very real. Okay. Every, and, you know, there is none of that sort of dreamlike quality to this, like there was even in the uh, the dream that you had with the with the demon. Mm-hmm. Um, this is all. Everything here feels like you have inhabited another life that has just overwritten your life. Mm. Um, you travel for uh, probably about twenty minutes, and it's pretty quiet. Um, you know, you can see that there's a lot of, uh, consternation and contemplation on this, uh, disciple's face. She's clearly trying to work through her feelings toward whatever it is that, that is going on here. Um, Um, my disciple flame, if I might ask, or if I might say rather, 
it's okay to struggle with these things. It's pain can be a great learning and internal pain can also be a way to understand yourself. These are not meant to be easy moments in life. These are meant to be the struggles that we take forward with us in our further struggles that make us stronger. I had always hoped that when I came across struggles such as this, that I would feel strengthened by them, by knowing that there would be difficulties that I might overcome, that I would feel emboldened with that knowledge. <laughs> that's, a, that's a very common assumption, especially of, of most of you devotees. What is really happening is that you don't realize you are stronger because you have struggled for so long. But the things that you have overcome to, got, to get to this point have worn you down. But with just a little bit of rest and just a little bit of patience, you will realize that you are much stronger than you've ever even noticed. So if you're struggling right now and you need a moment, you can take that moment. We are not here to, you know, rake you over the coals to the point where you can no longer breathe. We are here to fill your cup with strength and make that cup even larger so that you can fill it with even more strength and so that you can go about your day and just know that this small moment, this small struggle in the grand scheme of things will pass because you are stronger than you realize. But be patient with yourself. It is okay to struggle. I don't want you to think that you have to be in constant pain. How do we handle decisions we have made that are wrong? Decisions that have consequences that work against everything we hold dear. I have, I'm at a crossroads with my family here. And I may have made a choice to come to you. I do mm -hmm. not know if this choice is the right choice. I think it is. But I could be wrong. If I am wrong, how do I justify that pain? And I think that is where you are misunderstanding the teachings. You do not need to justify a mistake or a failure. A mistake is a lesson. A failure is how you continue forward because, unfortunately, Disciple Flame, you don't have another choice. Being strong through those failures is how we grow as disciples. And so if you feel as though you cannot practice the teachings, if you feel as though that you need to step away or you feel as though you want to struggle through this, all of those are correct decisions. We will always be here. We are as close to family as you can get. And we will never, we will never shun those who turn their backs on us because we know, we know in our heart of hearts, that we are correct. And through that struggle, and through that doubt, we become the people that we need to be. She nods. She says, I, I hope this situation is one that you can help with, though I, I admit that I am coming to you out of desperation. You do not need to apologize, or you do not even need to explain. We will A take our weeks. time, we will be patient, and we will get through this together. As we approach the clearing, I will, I will tell you what we have come to discover. A few weeks ago, my brother fell under some sort of curse. This curse has led him to make choices beyond his own rationality. 
and it has chain it is changing him physically and mentally I do not know if the teachings can help us, but I do know that I have nowhere else to turn to th for this. We I have want... kept him against his will mm. from joining this group so that you might speak to him. I see why... I see why your heart is in such turmoil, Disciple Flame. I do. These are decisions that feel selfish. These are decisions that feel as though you are forcing your will on someone else. We, we as, a, a, we as a, a faith do not believe in the greater good. We know that the greater good is just a pathway to cause evil for everyone. But what you have done is probably, if not definitely, the correct decision, though it feels painful to make. And pain does not make a decision bad. Pain makes a decision painful, and that's it. How do we protect one from themselves? We cannot, but... We can love, and we can show them the way, but we cannot, we cannot impose our will on others, but we can do our best to show them love. And the way we show love is through these hard decisions. You approach a clearing, and around the clearing there are, you see three or four other people in, uh, you see four other people in robes be specific uh, you know there's no uh, <laughs> three or four <laughs> it's hard to say uh you see four people in robes and you see one person they seem to be bound um on their knees in the center of this clearing mm -hmm. um the carriage pulls up and stops and uh she motions and gets down uh from the the carriage uh, and begins to walk toward this bound person uh, as she gets closer, she says, um, siblings, I have brought a disciple to speak with our brother. Um, and the brother starts to like, uh, you know, struggle against his bonds. And he says, no, let me go. Let me go. May I, brothers and sisters, may I speak with this bound one? They all take a step back um, and begin. They, they move away uh, far enough that you can sort of take the space. Um, as you approach, you see that this individual with his arms are bound and legs bound behind him. He's on his knees. Um, and as he looks up at you, his eyes glow uh, a golden yellow like um, like they have been uh, they're reflecting the light, the ambient light in the area in the darkness. Um, there is an animalistic quality to these eyes uh, that is uh, unnatural in a human. Hmm. Belaroth kind of uh, kind of like shuffles up a little bit, gets it down on uh, this uh, creature's level, and lowers his hood. He's like, "You won't change my mind." Hello, my name is Belroth. What is your name? I will say nothing to you. Okay. You do not need to say anything to me. I'm going to merely offer you a choice. And the choice is yours, and the choice I will honor. But it is a choice that you must make. Now, I believe your sibling brought me here under dire circumstances, because... Your current state is very frightening and very concerning for everyone. Now, what I can do is attempt to identify and break the curse that you seem to be under, or you can tell struggles me... Struggles when you say that, like fighting against his bonds. Or you can tell me what sort of deal or pact you have made with an extra planar being, 
and then I remove that curse or deal. Or third option, and the option I really hope you do not choose, um, but we execute you right here. He stops, he looks at you. He says, I just want to run free with my pack. Your pack. Tell me more about that. I can feel them. I can feel them calling in the woods. I can feel the heat on my back. I can feel the wind in my face. I can feel the blood in my teeth. Hmm. Um, Belroth would like to try and identify, just without a spell, but like identify exactly what is going on here. Yeah, give me a nature check. Oh, dang. Belroth, the regular Belroth, the original Belroth, Belroth Beacon, uh, not Disciple Beacon, uh, is very psyched. And uh, Belroth, uh, this Belroth has a minus one, but um, <laughs> still rolled a 19, or sorry, still rolled an 18. Great, great. So, so that's a 17? No, I'm sorry. I rolled a 19 minus one. I see. I see. Yeah. Um, yeah. So the uh, looking at the, the eyes which uh, you definitely feel like have, an, like I said, an animalistic quality to them. You start to glance around at him, uh, and you do notice that there is uh, basically right next to his shoulder, just under his shirt, uh, there is what looks to be maybe teeth marks, hmm. um, deep inset teeth marks. You suspect this is a, uh, a wear curse of some kind. Ah. Uh, now... Uh, child who has not given me a name. Do you feel as though your pact became your pact because you chose to be the pact? Do you actually remember making a choice to be part of this pack? Do you feel as though you've always been part of this pack? Even though you and I both know that is not true. There is no choice. There is just truth. Is there is truth. I am part of this pack. Ugh. Well, again, I would like to make you. I would like to offer you a choice. There is no choice. I'm offering you a choice, and I will not force you to make a decision. Now, if you make no decision, you stay here forever, and I will watch you as you wither away. But. If you make a choice, we can be friends. Now, would you like me to remove your curse, which is a thing I'm pretty sure I can do, or would you like me to execute you right here, right now in front of your family? There is no curse. No curse. This is truth. D uh, detect magic. Or actually, you know what? Detect good and evil. Yeah. Casting that. Okay. Um, I guess, yeah, actually, there do I even is... need a roll for that? I don't think I do. No, you just cast a spell. It's a spell. Oh, wow. Weird. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you can, uh, your senses, uh, because basically what happens when you cast good and evil, there's either, like, things that are really good uh, give off, uh, like, a sound, like, a, you can hear... Uh, not really with your ears, but with your senses, you can hear this resonance from good things. And there is a uh, something similar to a smell, a noxious, uh, dis, uh, like 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 a negative connotation to things you find that are evil. Um, and that smell, quote unquote, is in the air as soon as you cast this spell, uh, and you can you almost feel like you can see a miasma. Uh, like pouring up out of the wound in his shoulder. Hmm. And that sort of miasma looks sort of fresh. Obviously, it's only been a few days. Um, hmm. Well, I... I will tear you apart with my teeth. I will scratch my claws into your flesh, mm -hmm. and I will feed on your life. On the I'd, moon. It, from, from the looks of it here, it does not seem like that's true. And you and I both know that's not true. But it does look like as though I'm not speaking to the actual owner of this body. So I would like to, to speak to them. And uh, Belroth begins casting, I, th is, I think it's a ritual. Uh, no, it's not. 
uh, begins casting Zone of Truth around this uh, creature, as well as Belroth himself. Okay. Uh, so it's a whiz saving throw? It is, uh, until the spell ends, the creature enters the spell area, first turn, must make a charisma saving throw. On a failed save, they can't speak deliberate lie within the radius. Um, and Belroth is, like, trying to weave the spell in a way that sort of lets him speak to the actual, like, uncursed version. He see, he views this as though this is, like, kind of a two-body problem. I don't know if that's a way he can weave it, but that's, like, his intent. So let's talk about how, like, this zone that you set up. Like, what is the rich, like, the spell? I know it's not a ritual ritual, but there's a ritual component to it. Um, what does this look like for Belroth as he casts this? So <clears throat> it takes uh, only one action, believe it or not. Um, however, he just takes out a small bag of sand, um, opens it up. It becomes clear to, <laughs> well, everyone around knows it's not sand. But it becomes clear to this uh, lycanthropic uh, victim that it's actually ash, and that it is ash that has been somewhat consecrated, potentially uh, human ash, <laughs> touched ash. No one knows, but it's definitely not just sand. Um, and he pours some in his hand, and he blows it. And as it blows, it sort of magically... It doesn't just go forward. It kind of... Mm blows outward and forms like a, a dome around the area. Um, so when, because Belroth is a cleric, right? Bel Belroth Brilliance is a cleric mm -hmm. uh, and he is casting these spells. He is a follower of the teachings of Diam. How does he connect with his magic uh, to make that come through as a, as a disciple of Diam? So his, what is his, like, spell casting focus? Is that sort of mechanically? Yeah, or? yeah. Like, what is he doing to make the magic happen? Th this, these, this jar <laughs> or this small pouch of ash is something that he consecrates every night and something that he uses every night. Not every spell, he casts every spell technically through it. Not every spell he takes some out to, to disperse. Mm -hmm. But the, these are consecrated ashes of Diem, who, which are allegedly, uh, unless he got scammed, um, from the actual Diem or a high priest of Diem. Um, someone who is very um, connected to the original uh, teacher. Um, Where does Belroth feel like the magic for these spells comes from? Meaning, like, where... The actual power that fuels these, oh. uh, that he is drawing on. Where does he feel like that comes from? Uh, he feels as though he has, as a, as a disciple of Diem, he has gone through several rituals, a number of initiations, uh, several sort of branding ac exercises. There are, he's covered it in tattoos, but on his back there are several um, markings that are not made with a needle, but with a heat um, he believes that the struggle that he went through um, unlocked a gift that connects him more closely to himself. So it's not that he's drawing from, quote-unquote, Diem, because no one in Diem thinks that that man is a deity, right? He's just a man who unlocked more of themself and then became a greater being, sort of, through pain, elevated their consciousness and their, and so on and so forth. So the power he truly believes just comes from himself, but it's power that he has attained through these teachings. Does that make sense? Awesome. Yep. Totally. So uh, you cast this zone of truth, um, laying it out around this creature, and you watch as immediately it like struggles back uh, against that power, and you can feel that divide mm -hmm. that you know you're almost like trying to stick a wedge in um and 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 s uh, separate these two entities a little bit um and and you can see that while this darkness still has its hold on the person the person has to speak the truth they know not the truth they suspect mm -hmm. uh, or the truth they feel like they they have to they have to tell what they you know the truth in these scenarios what is your name? My name is Bartholomew. 
All right, Bartholomew, now we're working with something. Okay, Bartholomew, when did you encounter these uh, were-creatures? I was bit three weeks ago, under the harvest moon. Where were you when you were bit? Just outside my home. I heard creatures scrabbling around in the dirt outside the barn. I went to check, and I was attacked. I grabbed a nearby cudgel and tried to uh, fight them off. But I was bit. And then the changes came. Did you try and hide this change from your sibling over here? Remind me again, was it a... was? Flame uh, sister. Sister, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, did you hide these changes from your sister? Do you live with your sister? I am ashamed to say that yes, I tried to hide these transformations. What is your relationship with your sister? I worry that when she looks upon me, she sees someone not worthy of the time we have spent together, the time that we have uh, protected each other as family, that she sees someone who she cannot be proud of. Were you swinging this cudgel to protect your sister? I swung the cudgel to protect myself, but I was out to protect my family. Now... I'm going to give you the choice. And the choice is truly yours once again. But I'm going to do something before you make that choice. Disciple Flame, can you please enter the zone of truth? She steps forward. Disciple Flame, do you view Bartholomew as unworthy of your love? Um, Disciple Flame has tears streaming down her face as she has watched this interaction. She drops to her knees next to him. She says, no, no, we love you, Bartholomew. I love you. You are doing everything that you can. And and we, we cannot express how much we care about you. Do you wish for your brother's curse to be removed, Disciple Flame? Yes, yes, please. Bartholomew, do you wish for your curse to be removed? <laughs> I, I want to be able to say yes, but I can still feel the call. It is making me say no. And in my heart, I do not want to, but I, I want to want to. Belroth thinks for a second. And he turns around to the other disciples. He says, what we are seeing here is someone's free will sapped from themselves. So I give this Bartholomew a choice, and Bartholomew tries to make the choice and admits he cannot, but makes it abundantly clear what his choice is. Disciples, should I execute this man, or should I remove his curse? There is a murmuring um, uh, amongst the group. Uh, one person steps forward. Uh, he's an older man, and he says, If he cannot make a choice, then he is already too far gone. His will is gone, then he is gone. It is only our will that we have that separates us from these evils. Disciple, may I ask your... The name that we will call for you, call you during this ritual. I, I am Disciple Serpent. Now, followers of Diem, 
I understand Disciple Serpent's interpretation of Diem's teaching, of free will, of bettering yourself through adversity. And that if you cannot make a choice, if you are not willing to make a choice, then you are weak. But that is a shallow interpretation. That is a... I would say further, if you are not able to make a choice, you are already dead. And that is where you are also wrong. Because he's not able to make a choice because he's quite literally in bondage, not of his choice. Do we ask a prisoner, do they want to be executed? Not really. But I did it for this. To teach Disciple Flame, who is going through so much pain, so much agony, and growing through it all, that this moment is where the gray area of our teachings must exist. I'm going to remove this man's curse, and if I cannot, I will execute him. However, I know I can. And if after the fact, he tells me I made the wrong choice, I will kill him with my own spear. Turns around, starts to cast. The third level abjuration spell, remove curse. Uh, taking the uh, ashes that have now sort of uh, accumulated a little bit on his hand and touches the open wound. Uh, as you do, like white smoke hisses from the wound uh, as you pour this magic into these uh, like bite marks uh and and draw out that darkness um and he lets out a scream uh, just uh uh splits the air with this agonizing shriek and as he does the world like he he sort of just falls to the side um and spasms a bit and then he after a time he sits up a little bit he seems a little shaken uh and he says what 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 happened it's gone silent i can't hear them anymore bartholomew you've taken them from me bartholomew look at me and look at your and look at disciple flame your sister You have made a choice that you wanted to make, but could not. Now tell me if I misheard and misunderstood the choice you wished to make while in bondage. And I will end your life right now. I do not wish to die. No one does. Release this man from bondage. I believe we're done here. Uh, you turn to walk away and uh, you watch his flame just like gloms onto him on the ground, um, hugging her brother. Um, I guess you like, uh, are you just going to like head back like on foot? I was just going to get, in, get into the cart. Um, yeah. Okay. And like, so they, they take some time, you know, like 15 minutes pass. Uh, and then she comes over and climbs up into the cart. Um, and she says, I will take you back. I would appreciate thank that. Thank you. Well, there's nothing to thank. I did not make the choice. Once again, I cannot stress how much this was not my choice. Your brother said in no uncertain terms, I wish I could make the choice, which was all I needed to hear. And I just needed to hear if the disciples heard the same thing, which it seems as though some did not. But he said, I wish to make this choice but cannot. Which means... He wanted to live, and he wanted to continue to be part of your family. We came to find you because there were so many conflicting opinions on what his condition meant. (sighs) Mm -hmm. I'm struggling to understand how we can all feel we are following the teachings of Diam, and yet all feel so differently about what we were seeing and how best to handle that situation. Diem is a man. His teachings are not infallible. And that might sound like blasphemy, but that is 
from his own teachings, as we all know. Things, you know, parts of, parts of the following would say that my interpretations are too kind, um, but I think, I would think that they wish to inflict pain on others more than themselves. Your brother just went through a great ordeal, not self-inflicted, and he will grow from this. He has touched the very edge of death. He's touched the loss of freedom, and now will grow from this experience into a very, very strong man. Execution means we cannot continue our journey. And so that's how I interpret it. And if others interpret it otherwise, that's their free will. We have to come to consensus, of course, but arguments are just another type of growth and often, unfortunately, extremely painful because some people are very dense. And I mean, <laughs> and I truly mean that. Some people in the following are extremely dense, but that's okay because they have lived their life and they know what their life means and they know how to see life through their own eyes. And I will never tell them to see it another way. But I will tell them when they are wrong. They can continue to see it that way. That's their prerogative. But we must act with confidence when we are correct. Uh, as you ride up to your, to your cabin, uh, you can see in the darkness uh, another cloaked figure knocking on the door, pounding, pounding on the door. This is pretty uncommon. Uh, you know, as you think back to your uh, life here, it is very rare for you to get visitors at all. Mm. Uh, two in a night is absurd. <laughs> uh, excuse me. I would like to go to back to my uh, living quarters. Can I help you? Uh, yeah, the cart has like it pulls up, uh, and he turns and he says, "Message for you no. from the Grand Disciple." Oh, who? Oh. Goody. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Belroth like very quickly opens it and is very excited. Uh, yeah. Uh, as you open it, it is a, f a handwriting you are very familiar with, uh, one that you have seen many times before from your mother. Um, and the letter says, uh, Belroth, there is a matter of great importance that I must discuss with you. Uh, please come to the village as soon as you can. We have, there are time sensitive matters to attend to. Huh. This is the second time sensitive matter I've had to deal with in, uh, I guess a day. This is quite, this is quite exciting. <laughs> The scout that handed you the note is already like, trudging back into the woods. Oh, well, Belroth assumed he was talking to Disciple Flame, but is Disciple Flame also gone? Because that's no, also Disciple hilarious. <laughs> like, oh, oh, no one's here. Oh, well. <laughs> uh, no, I think Disciple Flame's still there. She's still up in the cart. Um, <clears throat> uh, well, I'm. I, this is my place. You don't need to take me any further. Um very well. Thank you again for everything that you did. Of course. And I, I do mean this, truly. It is okay to struggle. That's quite literally what we do. And sometimes we impose those struggles on ourselves and it makes us stronger. But the things that make us stronger are the ones that are out of our, our control. So you didn't do anything wrong. You just dealt with a lot of old members of the faith who have a very specific viewpoint and that sometimes in self is painful but you made the right choice and i want you to leave here knowing that you made the right choice <laughs> and i want you to leave and I <laughs> now and I now though <laughs> i have a time sensitive manner <laughs> uh she says thank you again of course and she uh you know, yeah! On the <laughs> yeah and off she goes <laughs> Well, uh, I guess I'll get my things. Um, Belroth. Like, Do you think Belroth owns a horse? Uh, no, he owns enough. Like, I think Belroth Beacon, not 
Belroth Brilliance, aka Disciple Beacon. Um, right, 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 right. I think Belroth Beacon would, and absolutely. I mean, did and did. Um, Belroth Brilliance <laughs> owns enough money to rent. And where's his horse now? I don't know. No one knows. It's gone. <laughs> um, uh, I think Belroth lives very well below his means. Um, he probably gets mm. an, he probably gets enough enough uh, tithing from whatever sort of following uh, he can. Um, and like encounters like this, yeah, I th- but like, I think probably as part of the deal, right? Um, like if I'm understanding flame left you a pile of coins. Oh, sure. Um, like a sack of coins that were just like part of, it was not like a thing that, you know, you didn't negotiate a price or anything like that. It was like you said, a tithing for your services. Mm. Uh, I think Belroth, uh, how long is the journey to the village? Um, on foot, it would probably take you like, you know, eight hours or so. Oh well, then he's gonna. Oh, eight hours. Um, he's gonna get a horse. He's gonna. He got a nice little tithing. He's gonna get a new horse. Um, he doesn't know where his other. He didn't have another horse, but now he's gonna get a horse. You just rent, right? Yeah, he's, he's gonna, gonna rent, rent a, horse. a horse. Yeah, but he's like rented rent one horse. horse a couple times. He like yeah, likes yeah. This is great little place. It's like a. It's just a nice little enterprise that you can uh, rent a horse. They'll bring it to you. Yeah. And drop it off, yeah. And then you ride the horse, horse and then max. You can just leave it anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. I would so, like a mid-sized uh, horse, please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. All we have are sports horses, sports utility horses. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I see here you rented an economy horse. I wanted but, a compact uh, horse, <laughs> but I, I mean, I'll take the sports utility horse. I just don't want. I don't want like a truck. That's really. I'm not, I didn't want a truck. We're not going to charge you extra for the luxury horse, but that's what we have. I feel like your. I feel like your rental system needs to be fixed like a hundred years ago because this happens every time (laughs) don't rent pintos if you don't have pintos don't let me rent one don't let me do it don't stop over doing this you know how much you have have an excess of inventory uh okay so you uh get a horse you rent a horse that was a and... carmax slander <laughs> like i mean really just all car yeah, rental is true. like that national yeah yeah the other one i can think of off the top of my head um so anyway you take a horse to the town this was not slander it was true no yeah, uh... yeah. it's still slander if it's true that's right <laughs> well whatever <laughs> uh okay so you travel to the town uh that you know, where your mother lives. Um, in this town, your mother is, uh, it's a small town near prosperity. Uh, the memories that you have coming in here uh, tell you that your mother is like a, it's not a big enough town for like a mayor, but if it was, mm-hmm. she'd be mayor. <laughs> yeah. She's sort of in charge mm-hmm. of this small town and leads this other life. Right, the her role within the teachings of Diam are separate from her role within the town for most people. Of course, there are some in the town who know her secret, but uh, there is this duality to her life here. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> do I see her immediately or? I think you see her place. Uh, you know, you know, it's it's a um, it was never your family home. Mm-hmm. But it is a place that you're familiar with and a place that you've been to many right, times. Right, because uh, Belroth it comes from the Demon Isles, has fam- like a ton of family in the Demon Isles, moved to here for his father's work, basically. Um, right. So um, that's, yeah, he's excited. He hasn't, I mean, he sees his mother frequently, but he's still excited. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, so you, uh, you know, park your horse, uh, (laughs) (laughs) I like the idea of a horse, uh, having a beeper to lock it. It's a good one. It's very, it feels like a very nineties joke. And then it have the little arm thingy that you put in to like make sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a dated Uh, reference. What is a claim? I don't remember. I don't remember. I know it's, there's, it's on Seinfeld at least once or twice, like as a joke. boot. Maybe I don't remember. All right, so <laughs> you uh, you head into the home uh, of Belvine Sanctity, and when you uh, knock knock knock, 
<laughs> knock, knock, knock. Um, yeah, a, a servant comes and opens the door for you. Uh, um, h- hello. And sees you. <laughs> Has, can I see my mother? Is she free? Of course, Master Brilliance. Come. Mm, of course. Thank you. How, how are uh, you doing? How are you doing? I am well. It is a pleasure to see you, even if the hour is late. Oh, thank you, Jeeves. His name is Jeeves. Uh, great. <laughs> Jeeves <laughs> Servitude. Also a tiefling. Also a tiefling. <laughs> <laughs> great. Um, uh, so uh, he takes you back to your mother's study, and she says, uh, Thank you, Jeeves. That will be all. Um, do you want anything to to drink, Belroth, before we begin? Oh, if you do, ask Jeeves. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm actually quite good. Um, I'm I'm good. I, I was just excited to see you. How how are you doing? I, I haven't seen you in a couple of days, but you know, I am I'm well. I'm there's potentially very good news. Oh, uh, I've brought you for some what I'm hoping will net us some great results. Ooh, excellent. Um, Belleroth kind of like uh, sits down in a, a nearby chair. Actually, Jeeves, could I have some tea? I've decided I want tea. <laughs> I've changed my mind. Hey, uh, you know, this is like the weird uh, dichotomy of this, right? Like she asked him to leave. She asked him to shut the door. She wanted some private discussion. You ask for tea. He just like opens the door. He's like, yes, j- right away, master. Like he clearly can hear what's going on in this room. Uh... But he just, he like, yes, of course. And he goes to get you tea. He can hear us. Is that is that going to be a problem? Uh, I don't think, it, probably it'll be fine. Okay, nothing too discreet. I mean, I Jeeves, I Jeeves think knows. So. Jeeves Well, yes, to know, of course. Right. Of course. We, we never talk about um, it, but. No. No. I don't think he approves, but he knows. Oh, that's good. As you know, I have been doing some side research, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, hoping to pry into some of the secrets of our order a little bit. Ooh. Uh, and I think there may be a potential that we could get some information that I've been hoping to get my hands on for a long time. There are some caveats to this. Mm-hmm. I believe that I have discovered the resting place of Diam. Belroth's like eyes widen pretty far. And I think it's here in the Greywood. Why would it be in the Greywood? That makes no sense. Uh, 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 well, from the journals I have been able to recover, Diam spent much of his time in the swamps of Moravia. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. There was some sort of incident toward the end of his life that caused him to flee. At the time, this was not a wooded land. This was a land of fields and hills. Okay. And his tomb was built here by his closest adherents. And that tomb is now overgrown by the forest around us. Hmm. Interesting. That would make sense with the historical record, considering there is just sort of this cutoff, right? Where the where his journals just sort of end. So where did you find this additional information then? I have been con- de- dealing with a private collector of sorts oh. who has a great deal of information he has acquired over a long period of time. Stuff that... I'm not sure where he got it from, but it has been out of circulation for generations. Uh, if there was a time that people knew about the contents of this journal, then it was before the fading. Of uh, It would have been before anyone would remember because of the fading. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. N- now, is <clears throat> is the journal with us, or is, did you get a transcript? I got fragments <sighs> of the journal. The Baron is uh, very particular about his collection, and I have had to be very diplomatic to get what I have gotten so far. But I believe it is enough for us to begin the search. I mean, it's like Diam always says, wealth is a cushion for the weak. So I'm not surprised a rich old man has things that are important for other people. I, and I wish that it were so easy 
as to uh, ply him with riches. Ugh. Sadly, he is uh, more discerning than that. So he just wants things he can't get otherwise? He is... Uh, antiquities and experiences tend to be his uh, trade good. Oh, has, he, has he ever been tortured? Because I could do that. That would, be a very, that would be a thing I could do for him. I'm not being... I, ki- I'm not kidding. I mean... Some people no, are I like know. that. They like that. So, uh, I need something else from you. Okay. I have contracted with a, um, a company to help us search out this tomb. Mm-hmm. It is important that we can discover it. But I think it is Im- also important that we send one of our own with them. Ah. I do not necessarily trust that we will... Get the results we want, unless we have one of our own with them. Is it missions possible? Because I like, I, I think they're, I think you know they're underrated. Honestly, I, I had to, uh, put out a, a bid uh, through the town, and uh, it is Adventure Incorporated that has really? uh, taken the bid. They're usually so pricey, though. Meh. Either way, and I think it is probably for the best. There is a group who is uh, familiar with Greywood and willing to help guide this little expedition. Mm-hmm. And I was I needed someone I could trust to send along, and I have chosen you. I can I can do this, mother. This is this is a great honor, honestly. Go to the tomb if you can find it. Of course. Extract what information you can, and perhaps we will have more understanding. Of Diam that we can share when you return. Mother, may I ask a um, may I ask a question that I I don't want to seem come off as insecure, but I gotta know. Why didn't you ask uh, Why didn't you ask Dorcia? She's she's the adventurer. This is what she does. She adventures. Dorcia is not here, and Dorcia, I do not know when she will return. Mm. Uh, you're right. Her skill set is more in line with this. Mm-hmm. But I believe you have it within you as well, Belroth, and it will be challenging. But it is through these challenges that you will rise to overcome them. Thank you, Mother. Thank you for giving me this obstacle to overcome. I will... Uh Send for our team. Uh, you may rest here. And in the morning, I will uh, send you away with them. Our point of contact here it looks like um, an Amelia Moonwake. Hmm. Never heard of her. <laughs> everyone dm anthony here just reminding you that if you're enjoying the show tell your friends tell your family uh, let people know word of mouth and you can support the show at patreon.com slash adventure inc or you can check out the shop at adventuringpod.com slash shop make sure you check the show notes and the website for all our social media including our discord where you can come and hang out with some great people we'll see you there and until next week i wish you nothing but critical success Serious business.